Welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Emily. I created Definite Hearing as a way to support the deaf and hard of hearing. I have a moderate to severe hearing loss and I wear hearing aids in both ears. And boy, do I love them. Part of this love for my hearing aids means taking care of them. So today I'm going to talk about hearing aids and hearing devices and going to the beach. I hope you stick around to the end of this video because if you do, I'm going to share why I, for the longest time, have not liked the ocean. I hope you stick around to the end of this video for that answer. My husband and I recently came back from Hawaii and it was so enjoyable. We absolutely loved it. A beach was a huge part of our trip. We went there often. Almost every single second that we could get to the beach, we were there. And sometimes with coronavirus, the beach was the only option of entertainment. We really enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I look forward to sharing more excellent content. So let's talk about hearing devices and the beach. The beach can be a dangerous place for hearing devices because of the sand and the water. Sand and water are like the two enemies of hearing aids, if anything, other than like little monsters that want to eat hearing aids. This could be children, pets, anything else like that. But the beach can be a dangerous place, so it's important to keep track of your hearing aids. Now, I asked my mom about this topic and just said like, you know, from a parent's perspective, what do you recommend for parents of children who have hearing devices? And she said, oh, leave them at home. And this is why she chose to use Cute Speech with us. Cute Speech was my mom's way of communicating with my sister and I. It essentially uses hand signs and facial position to enunciate the phenomes of speech. And it helps children essentially to lip read. It is amazing amazing. So it's not sign language, it's a different form of speech, like teaching people how to speak. And so anyway, she just said, don't take your hearing aids to the beach. That's why I use cute speech so that I could still continue to communicate with my child while we were at the beach without them having to have their hearing aids. So for parents, it's a good idea to leave your child's hearing aids at home because at the beach, there are so many opportunities to lose their hearing aids. And there's nothing worse than the gut feeling of your child not having their hearing aids and not knowing where they are with a whole beach before you to search. And not only that, but if you do find the hearing aids, you've got to hope and pray that they're not damaged because sand and water can damage the hearing aids if it enters the aid. Now, a lot of hearing aids nowadays have excellent IP or ingress protection rating, but if that battery door is open, the sand and the water can easily get inside and the chances of the hearing aid working properly dramatically decrease. So keep your hearing aids safe. So I want to share what I did in Hawaii. I did a couple different things. There was another time that I left my hearing aids in the car because it was not hot and I put them in a temperature controlled box in a bag in the car. It was hidden just to, you know, deter theft. And then I also took my hearing aids and put them in my waterproof, sandproof box in the bag on the beach. There are lots of things you can do to protect your hearing aids, but I like to, the second I get to the beach, enjoy the feeling and then put my hearing aids away in the box. I like to use a hard case box because though it may be tempting to use a Ziploc bag, it still enables the hearing aids to get crushed or smushed. A hard case box ensures that they have a protective shell around them. Now it's important that once your hearing aids are stored in a bag on the beach that someone watches them so that they don't get lost or dropped or things like that. You always want to check if your hearing aids are there. In terms in terms of going out into the water, if you cannot hear, I highly recommend a swimming buddy or a beach buddy that just stays right with you all the time. When Joel and I went snorkeling, we had safety belts. That's not the same as a life vest for any children definitely have a life vest and just know that communication is a struggle on the beach when hearing devices are out and off. So as a parent, you want to consider how you'll help your child. I definitely recommend taking another adult that can stay close to your child and help them if they need help or just ensuring they stay close to you. Now I say all these things to take care of your hearing aids so that you can have a good time. There's nothing like going to the beach and, you know, playing in the waves and having a wave come knock you out and take your hearing aids. So yeah, you just want to make sure you're careful. It's really tempting to stand in the water with your hearing aids on and you can do it the waves look little but a big wave could come around at any moment and you don't want to lose your hearing aids they're so expensive hearing all hearing devices are and so it's important to be mindful of that i really can't wait until we get waterproof hearing aids or until the day that we have gps trackers in our hearing aids so even if we did drop them at the beach or something you could pull up the tracker figure out where it is granted it might be buried in the sand so that might be hard to find it but still just kind of some tips of taking hearing devices to the beach. Be proactive, make sure the hearing aids are protected, and always be checking out to make sure they're still there. I hope this video helped. If you have any questions about hearing devices at the beach, please leave them in the comments below. I love getting questions and I love sharing my experiences. I'm not an expert, but 
boy, I feel like I know a lot having worn these hearing aids 20 plus years of my life. Thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. I want to share why for the longest time I did not like the ocean. My family loves the beach. We go to the beach often on family vacations because I have a big family and it was easy to just drive to the beach. So there was one time when I was little, I'd probably say like elementary school age, we got to the beach and we all ran out and we were standing in the waves and kind of pretending we were surfing and the waves were really big. And I was standing there and all of a sudden this massive wave came and just knocked me out. I was tumbling in the water and I got so much salt water up my nose. And when I finally got out of it, I was just shocked because I had had what felt like a minute of not being able to breathe and being like tumbled and banged around that I was like, oh, whoa, whoa. And it was just so shocking. I just was more comfortable on the beach. And for so long, that experience just kind of made me hesitant of the waves because I was having so much fun. And all of a sudden out of nowhere, I just got like taken out by this wave. So that is why for the longest time, I did not like the ocean. But since our trip to Hawaii, oh, I just kind of fell in love with the ocean again. I feel like I have my hearing aid planned down. And with Joel as my travel buddy, it makes it so easy and so fun to enjoy the ocean because all that matters is enjoying the ocean and that I can communicate with him. And it was just lovely and we really enjoyed it. I highly recommend the ocean. Don't be afraid of it. Just have your action plan ready to go. Please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I look forward to making more awesome content. I hope you have a great day. Bye.